All right. <laughs> you know, we got some comedy yesterday when Errol Spence Jr. retweeted Chris Van Herden's tweet that talked about getting an offer from top rank and his O has to go. That man, who else would he be talking about other than Terrence Bud Crawford? So it is a potential of Terrence Crawford fighting Chris Van Heerden. You cannot make this stuff up. Let's talk about it in this video. All right, welcome back to the channel. Man, I was okay. So I was sitting there watching Trill Bison talk and it came through the feed, came through the in the chat and somebody said, hey, Errol Spence Jr. just tweeted about Terrence Crawford fighting Ter Terrence Crawford next. That's what I heard, right? So I was like, what? Oh man, Errol Spence Jr. and Terrence Crawford, they're gonna make the fight? Wow. So I ran over to the Twitter page and uh, didn't literally run because, you know, it's a Twitter page. So I clicked on over to the Twitter page, looked at it and saw what the tweet was. And it was just it was not a, a conversation about uh, Terrence Crawford fighting Errol Spence Jr. It was Errol Spence Jr. retweeting what Chris Van Heerden said about him accepting an offer from top rank for a fight. And he said his O has to go. Now, how do we know that that is? Why would we believe that that is Terrence Crawford? Because Chris Van Heerden fights at 154 and 147 pounds. And that is the only, that is the only undisputed, undisputed welterweight that they have. And that he would be so excited about that Errol Spence would retweet it. He's talking about Terrence Crawford. And honestly, that's about <laughs> that's about the best fight that I think that Terrence <laughs> that I would have expect from Terrence Crawford. And that's a sad thing, man. That's a sad thing. Yes, yes, yes. I'm going to be back at it. I'm not a Terrence Crawford hater. See, this right here proves to my man Woolbag and Drink More Water. Shout out to you guys. I do believe you both are channel members. Look, I am not hating, man. I can't make this up. This is going to be one, the uh, just another guy that don't nobody want to see Terrence Crawford fight that Terrence Crawford is about to jump in that ring with, man. J man, Terrence Crawford is in a victory lap. He's in a he's in a victory lap, man. Let's go over the people that he has fought <laughs> since he got his un since he became undisputed champion at 140 pounds. Jeff Horn. OK, now I know the saying, well, Jeff Horn was the champion. OK, Jeff Horn is the champion. I got you. I'm just talking about the quality of the fighter, independent of them holding a, a belt or not. OK, now I don't blame Terrence Crawford for fighting uh, Jeff Horn because Jeff Horn had a belt. But when you look at it and you say, oh, this is Jeff Horn versus Terrence Crawford. The only thing significant about that is the belt. Like you could have a fight between Terrence Crawford and Sean Porter with no belt on the line. And that's a significant fight. Okay. You could have a fight between Sean Porter and a rematch between Sean Porter and Keith Thurman with no belt on the line. And that's still a significant fight. Jeff Horn with, with, Terrence Crawford with no belt on the line is not a significant fight. Okay. But the belt was there. So, hey, we give you credit for that. Then he proceeds to fight Jose Benavitez in a voluntary. Jose Benavitez in a voluntary. Now, note something here. Jose Benavitez was shot in the knee before, right? We all know that it wasn't a competitive fight. Wasn't on paper, it wasn't a competitive fight. He had been out for a long time. He took one fight uh, against somebody that wasn't tremendously good anyway. He wins that fight and boop, he's into a WBO championship fight against Terrence Crawford. All right, but Jose Benavitez, is anybody asking for that fight? Any, was anybody sitting around saying, oh yeah, Jose Benavitez? No, but we knew that they were going to fight for a couple, you know, at least months before that, 
Um, but no, that's just another in-house fight. No big deal. Then he proceeds to fight Amir Khan. Now, Amir Khan, is that a big fight? No, Amir Khan had already been knocked out by Danny Garcia. He had already been knocked out by Canelo Alvarez. He'd been knocked out by Bredis, uh, Bredis, Bredis Prescott. He had been he had been beaten by Lamont Peterson. You know, he was a guy that used to, he's a guy that has name recognition that used to be a serious contender at 140 pounds. You know, was a contender, was a, might've been a champion at 140 and, but was a contender at 135 and 140 uh, never became close to being a top 147 pounder, got blown out at 150. So would you say that was a significant fight? I would say no. Then Igis Kalvinakis is his mandatory, right? So it's a mandatory. Is it a significant fight? No. But I do want to note something here, though, that is unique about Terrence Crawford. It's unique when you compare him to a guy like Deontay Wilder, when you compare him to a guy like Errol Spence Jr. And like, let's take those two. And, and this is what I say is unique. It is the level of just in the welterweight division, just in his fights in the welterweight division. The fact that his mandatories, mandatories have been more difficult than his voluntaries. Peep that. Look at the four, look at the five people that he, if he fights, um, Chris Van Heerden, note that the two voluntaries, and I'll say, I mean, two mandatories, the champions, right? What I mean, the ones he had to fight, that he didn't have any choice but to fight. He didn't have any choice but to fight uh, Jeff Horn because he had the belt, and he didn't have any choice but to fight Igis Kalvinakis because he was the mandatory. Igis Kalvinakis is a, is, was a better fight on paper, in my opinion, a better fight on paper then Jose Benavitez, then Amir Khan, and then and um uh Chris Van Heerden. Better than let me make sure I get these the that I've named them all right, the volunteers. Better than Jose Benavitez, better better than Amir Khan, and will be better than Chris Van Heerden. Same thing for Jeff Horn. Jeff Terrence Crawford's mandatory, he, the guy beat. And the mandatory are tougher than the voluntaries. That is ass. That's what you call ass backwards. Okay. Because you should, your voluntaries should be the tough fights. The voluntaries should be the tough fights, right? Because aren't people saying that the reason that there's a mandatory champion is because these guys are forcing these mandatories on guys that aren't any good, right? So you see Deontay, like take, for example, the mandatory that, the mandatory that, uh, Errol Spence Jr. has. Let's name two of his mandatories. He's got the guy with that long ass name, uh, Hakashmaki Shmaki Stan, something like that. But the guy from Kazakhstan or wherever he's from that beat, uh, that beat, it wasn't Josecito Lopez he beat, but anyway, it's that guy, the IBF mandatory. I can't even remember his name. Can't, I see his face, can't remember his name. All right. Then you have Carlos Ocampo. All right. Now let's look at Errol Spence Jr.'s voluntaries. His voluntaries were Lamont, Lamont Peterson, Mikey Garcia, and Sean, and Sean Porter to unify. And Kell Brook. Kell Brook to win the championship. Sean Porter to unify. A uh, voluntary against Carlos Ocampo. And a fight against um, whatever his name for the IBF for the IBF belt. But other than that, it's Mikey Gar. Well, actually, Mikey Garcia, Sean Porter, Mikey Garcia, Sean Porter, and L- uh, Lamont Peterson. Those are tough. That's a tougher fight than the than the mandatory, the two mandatories that he has, which is the foreign, the guy with the long name, and uh, and and. Carlos Ocampo. Look at Deontay Wilder. Look at Deontay Wilder's voluntaries and look at his mandatories. His voluntary, his his mandatories were Dominic Brazil and Brazil and uh Dominic, yeah, Dominic Brazil and um Bermain Stavern. 
his voluntaries have been Luis Ortiz twice and Tyson Fury now twice. See, with it, when it comes to Deontay Wilder and Errol Spence Jr., the 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 things that they the people he they volunteer to fight are harder than the people that the dub that the sanctioned bodies mandate them to fight. But with Terrence Crawford, the people that the voluntaries he takes are easier than the mandatories. It's bananas, man. The dude ain't fighting nobody, man. And don't call me no hater. That is the best, the God honest truth, what I just told you. Anyway, it is what it is. You let me know what you think in the comment section. Thank you to everybody that subscribes, everybody that supports, the members on the channel, the Patreon community, the live stream, the people who come by the live stream, OG Boxing Talk on Sundays. And with that, I'm out. Peace.